Yes, um, it's uh, 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 as you probably know. It's uh, it's probably our um, it's one of our national sports to the heart. It's very <laughs> it's yeah. It's uh, it's it's one of the most complicated games in the oh, world. Yeah. The title of the book is uh, A Season in the Sun, um, and uh, it's about um, it's. Uh, I used to work in the in the city of London um, when I when I worked for proper living. And so um, uh, I, uh, uh, I I stopped that, and um, uh, I was uh, I was on a holiday in, in a place called the Seychelles, the islands off in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Africa. Poof. And um, if you say the very Indian nice, Ocean, I think of sharks. Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think of white sand. <laughs> but oh, anyway, really? white sand and extremely good cocktails. But um, they. Uh, uh, I noticed that there was a, a little group of people playing cricket. Now, I don't, you, you're closer to the Caribbean than we are, but you know that in the West Indies, you know, there's very strong um, cricketing uh, tradition. In in the Seychelles, there's nothing of the sort. So it was uh, it was a bit of a surprise, and uh, and it set me to thinking what what would it be like if a uh, if a village if a village team on a, on a tropical island. Um, you know, attained uh, as the underdogs attained uh, attained the the greatest of standards and, and won the cup. Basically, uh, I don't know if you've I don't know if you've ever seen a film called Cool Running about the Jamaican yes. bobsleigh team. Yes, well, I have. Yeah, That's think, a good movie. Think, think, think Cool Running for for cricket. Really, you have this sort of tiny little village on a small island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, which uh, which wins the Seychelles uh, cricket Man, cup. and people love uh, cricket. People love it. People love it. Like, <laughs> I passion, do. <laughs> I think it's like a, a lesser word that you could use in this in this situation. It is a passion. It is a passion. It's one of it's one of those games that you can talk about. It's a bit like golf, really. You can you can you can talk about it forever, uh -huh. without 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 really you know even even scratching the subject matter. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about it, honestly. I think oh, I do. You have a, a person who has a ball, and his job is to knock the pins down, right? It's, it's and the, the guy with the it's, bat. It's a bit like baseball, but but you know, obviously, you know, massively more complex. Did you play? <laughs> I did, did a bit, it? Really? not very much. I used to row actually as a as a boy, so oh, uh, it was a sport. choice of either rowing or cricket. But uh, uh, I did a bit of. I have played a bit of cricket. I'm not very good, but I it do seems, love watching it. Very gentlemanly. It seems very. It is extremely, which hence the, um, hence the great problems they're having at the moment in Australia, where someone's been caught, ten percent papering a ball to make it swing a bit more, which is, um, that's very, um, that's that's is it, as you would say, it's not cricket. <laughs> very interesting. It, yeah. And um, how long has that book been out? Uh, it's been out for about six months. Um, six months. It's um, <clears throat> it's, it's uh, as I say, it's the first. Uh, my my wife is a is a prop novelist, and um, I saw she that. writes a lot of stuff. And you guys are working and, together on a project. And too, we are now too. working. Yeah, amazingly enough, we're working together on a project, which um, which I I hope will uh, I hope will go very well. We've got a deal, so that's good news. And, so this is your um, first novel, though, right? The one that you have out right now on Amazon. The one, this one is my first. You and, must have impressed uh, her with it. She's like, oh, I'm going to work with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's an encroachment. I don't know. It's uh, it's it's you know it's going okay, and it's uh, it's um, it's it was great fun to write. That was uh, that was the main thing. I, I, Where I, are you I thoroughly from, enjoyed though, it. in uh, London? What what did you do? Um, I used to work. Novel? I used to work in the city. Uh, I was um, a project um, project financier. Oh, interesting. So, uh, so I, I I worked uh, you know in the equivalent of Wall Street for. Uh, uh, for about 20, 25, 26 years. Stressful. <laughs> and uh, very stressful. And, yeah. and luckily, I was offered the opportunity to uh, uh, to take the money and run at one point. So I took it <laughs> and ran. Yeah. So, uh, and that was uh, about um, five or six years ago. So uh, uh, I've uh, I've enjoyed it. So I'm, uh, I, was, uh, I write music and, and things as well and plays. So I've sort of I've uh, removed myself from the city completely, really. So is this something that you've always wanted to do? When you were in school or younger, did you always want to be a novelist or a playwright? or? Not, not really, to be honest. I've always wanted to be a musician, but um, I've never a really a musician. But I've never, never, I, I didn't, the sort of writing bit came later. Um, I think I started writing, uh, I got involved writing music for plays. Uh, in um, 
uh, well, both at both at university in Cambridge and and now more recently here, and um, that sort of set me off to writing lyrics, and then you know which which I suppose in turn set me off to writing plays. So it's sort of come gradually, yeah, over the last five six years. You find it, it come does it come easy? Do you struggle um, with the creation part of the uh, process? It's it's um it's really changeable to be honest. There's some wonderful days, you know, where you can just sit down and write effortless, effortlessly and uh, and lots. And then there are other days where I just just it's uh, it's like uh, rolling a boulder uphill. Um, uh, I find uh, and and sometimes you know it's the smallest idea which sets you off. Sometimes uh, it's a real struggle. <laughs> so. 50 50 i'd say so i know you and your wife are working on a project but are you working on a novel of your own <clears throat> not at the moment Dad. we've got to finish off we have the the deal we have is a two book deal we've sent one in which is being edited currently and will be out like crazy two book book. deal too with like double day is it double day oh, well wow. yeah, that was the sort of it was <laughs> it was good and bad the good news was that we got the deal and, and the one book was ready the, the the bad news was by i think um Sort of uh, this summer, we have to write another one, and yeah. um, we're about we're about halfway through. Well, that's so, by uh, the summer, it. you said. So, oh, yeah, that's not yeah. too bad. You can do that. Yeah, it's it's do, it's 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 doable. It's it's a lot easier with two people actually. How do you um, how do you write with your wife? I mean, how does that work? <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's a good question. We um we have we have studies one above the other in our house, uh, and. It, we started off effectively. I, I would write something, or she would write something, and then I would give it to her, and then she would write something, and then give it back, and it sort of gradually built up. Um, uh, this one, we we sort of got a we've got an, a, a rough outline plot, and yeah, we just we just add bits, and and uh, they get amalgamated into one grand script, uh, which and that all that's fine. That works very well. Um, when we have to read it through together. And and go through each word, word by word, then then the atmosphere grows a little colder. But um, yeah, you know, we're still here. So <laughs> we're let's still say we're still you've got like a chapter one, right? And you're working on it. So you yeah. send it to her. Does she work yeah. on chapter one, or does well, she just accept that you wrote chapter one and we'll write number two? <laughs> no, no, she she'll say. Um, she, I, I I think we probably both amend each other's sort of slightly quietly but but not we also amend it sort of at the very end so that the style is sort of fairly it funnily enough the first one it does genuinely look quite seamless actually i couldn't tell really um, that's interesting that so you were able to partner up with your wife like uh, that right i mean that's like the fantasy <laughs> at the end of the day it you marry somebody that you can communicate that well with you write a novel with is well, it a novel there, like yeah it's a novel yeah, yeah. There, there it is i mean there are there are moments of um, tension but yeah it seems to work all right <laughs> Um, so you are not now you're working on the second book yeah. and that and that for that contract yeah. and that process is going better than it did the first time or is it I still think probably, we probably learned a few ways of doing things it's a uh, they're mystery stories uh -huh. murder mysteries so oh, cool. um it, it it's sort of i think we're getting more into there's there's a, a fairly standard and traditional way these things are laid out i think mm -hmm. and we're probably getting a bit more familiar with that um uh and uh obviously learning you know learning of many new ways to kill people um uh, oh, yeah. but um interesting ways too <laughs> interesting ways to do people <laughs> it's but, amazing but, there's still there are still ways to kill people that's the sad I, thing it, it's a, it's a huge it is a yeah, sad true it's a huge genre i couldn't i mean i'm i yeah. it's it's not it's not one that i you know sort of uh read an awful lot of but uh it's an absolute mess. But everybody's anyway, familiar it's, with it's it, great. right? I mean, yeah, Agatha Christie you know. just—they did oh, a course, uh, yeah. revival. Yeah, it's a very, mm, yeah, it's a very yeah. traditional. I mean, it's a very good. It's it's you know, they, it is it is quite fun um, trying to um, set a load of red herring, you know, a load of uh, red wild goose chases and red herrings for people to so uh, get I mean, lost it's, in. It's puzzling, right? Are you a puzzle person? Mm. Do you I like? I do quite like. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, yeah, absolutely. What kind of puzzles do you like? Um, oh God, I, I'm not actually. I don't do. I don't do cryptic stuff, but um, I do like. I do like. Yes, the sort of crosswords and you know, uh, Sudoku and. Because that's basically what you're dealing like with, that. right? You're kind of building the plot up and working mm. on a puzzle in reverse, in a way. You do. I mean, I do think you. You certainly, 
it, it was quite interesting with certainly with the first book with with a season in the sun i had a fairly good idea of what was going to happen you know sort of uh of how it was how that how it was going how uh, i had a fairly good idea of a and c as it were but mm -hmm. but uh, getting b was, was more of a problem <laughs> you know getting there i knew what was going to happen in the end i knew what was going to happen in the beginning it was the middle which was a difficult bit and um and i think that was probably the same here actually is that you have to you, know, you can't you can't give anything away too obviously or too early, mm -hmm. you know. But you have to have a bit and of depth in there. You too <laughs> thick-headed about it. I mean, you want your audience exactly. to be like, "I'm smart. I know what's going on." Yeah, well, exa <laughs> exactly. They've got to, and they've got to be. They've got to feel good that they've solved something. So it's you know, it's got to be logical. The the difficult thing is actually making it absolutely logical and time. Everything is time critical because you know, you know it's very important that people know what happened when. And things like that. So it's it's quite it's quite complicated to get it into um, get in get it into an order that's um, uh, you know that that people can accept. But, yeah, uh, we're it's good fun. so. I mean, as far as the challenge of writing your first novel and then writing mm -hmm. your second novel with your wife mm -hmm. and your third novel, for that matter, as well, mm -hmm. are you starting to think about? projects beyond that on your own or have you pretty much found your um, niche with the mysteries i don't Does know i think i think i mean it depends how it depends how well they sell doesn't it because if they sell well we'll carry on we'll carry on producing them they're, they're already talking about more so i think that that oh, may awesome. run which is great um i have a yeah i have a vague idea for a sequel to um the first one uh Hen henry is the, uh, the character is a good i think you know the character is i i love the character in it uh, i love and this slightly matter, for that matter as well and you've got a yeah. built-in audience i mean yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah where it's popular it's really popular yeah yeah it's and it's and, and you know the fact that it takes place on a tropical island helps and things like that so uh i think um there's did you it's ever got say, a, it's I'm got sorry, like, which island did you say it was the, that was the seychelles the seychelles are uh, a set of islands in the in the indian ocean um they're just sort of near madagascar okay. um and uh they're uh, cl clearly, I mean, though they're, they're the other side of the world from you, but uh, yeah. they're uh, slightly less far from us. But uh, I've, I've been, been three or four, personally? four or five times. Yeah, wow. I mean, I've, been, okay. I've been a lot of times. I love it. I love them. They are the absolutely idyllic. Uh, they're everyone's dream of what a tropical island should look like, you know, with palm trees and things. Is it considered and, Africa or no? <clears throat> it is part of Africa, but yeah. I'd say it was. It's it's been. It was French, and then it was English. I, it, it was now it's independent so it was sort of part of the empire for a while for quite a long while which is which is why its capital is called victoria and uh and it's they speak english and a bit of french and a bit of creole um so it's, it's, it's a wonderful it's a lovely too, place huh? sorry and they were they were a colony now they're not they're independent and that they're independent typically for 40 years yeah how are they handling it Oh, they love it. It's actually, I think, in Africa, it's one of the wealthiest. It, it's, it's a. I mean, it's got the most wonderful tourism industry because it is and fish, because it is right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Um, it was, it was, it's a slightly sort of benevolent. Um, it was run as a slightly benevolent uh, dictatorship. Yeah, by I was going to say, wondering if that would pop up. <laughs> uh, um, funnily enough, but it's now more democratic. It's it's a very sort of um, it's quite a civilized. It's a very civilized place, actually. It's, and it's I mean, pretty, that stuff is all so tenuous, well, too, right? I mean, you can have right? like a we built. It's so tenuous. I mean, it's so mm. delicate. Their, their political situation. Yes. Oh, be like one minute. Great. And the next minute. Mm. And I mean, this is a, yeah, and this is an island which, you know, it's a set of islands which has, I think I'd be surprised it has more than half a million people in total in the wow. whole country. So, I mean, it's like, you know, it's it's a, the weird situation that you have a country which is the same size as a small town in, <laughs> in, in the UK or US. It's, uh, um, but they're delightful people. That's and, interesting. Uh, and you've been four or five times. And do they I like? Love it. Is cricket a gigantic thing there, or no? Absolutely not. No. And that was no. what surprised me. I, I, <laughs> I saw, I saw one team play it, and I went back and researched it a bit, and I found they'd literally just started. You know, they, they've only just applied to be part of the International Cricket Federation. Oh, that's that's fantastic. So How really, long ago was that? 
oh, 10 years or something, 15 years. How so, are they doing in terms of the know, whole? No, no, I've never seen the team in my life. Oh, really? <laughs> not, not brilliantly, I think, is the answer. But, uh, I mean, but they've only just started. So, you know. Your premise is that they do brilliantly. Right. My premise is that on the island, a village, a village team. If you if you come to the UK ever, you'll see that a lot of villages like the one I live in here have little village cricket teams, and and you know, there's a league, and they and they play each other. Uh-huh. It's obviously far far below the major, you know, the counties and and towns that play cricket in a in a bigger league. So my my idea or my thought was, you know, wouldn't it be fun over time? won the cup so you know I, I suppose it's akin to you know one of your minor one of your minor american football towns winning you know winning the super bowl <laughs> you know so it's not going to happen but it's nice to dream about everybody loves an underdog everybody yeah and oh yeah this is one of those Especially outside the, the realm of possibility underdogs right just a, yeah. A, a, yeah but it's um and then and then the idea and you know as i say it was it was it was fun to have um the idea of a of a slightly sort of lazy indolent ex city gent being having to having to manage the team. It, it, the, the, the 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 point is that he he is um he is given a legacy which uh, impels him to manage this team. Otherwise, he doesn't get the money. So uh, uh, he has to go out there and manage this team. Oh, so he has and to do it. He has to do it, and he starts off slightly sort of you know diffidently, even though he's a terrific cricket fan. But he but he um. Uh, he realizes that uh, he's actually he actually quite enjoys it and and obviously they go on to greater glory or not depending on how the book ends That's so interesting <laughs> so you you went to cambridge as yes. a uh, as an undergrad or how does that work yeah, in as a undergrad now as a science as a scientist yeah, so, uh, what did you uh, get your degree in finance uh no science uh, natural science. science yeah i was a scientist and oh, uh, why science I, um, right, I, I loved it. A, I loved it, and B, I, I, at the sort of school level, I found it very easy. So uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't didn't require too much work. That's interesting. And uh, and, uh, and I enjoyed it. And I did. Uh, and then, unfortunately, I went to Cambridge, where you know many of the world's most brilliant scientists live. And I realised that whatever happened, I wasn't going to be one of the world's most brilliant scientists. So I did philosophy wow. instead for the last year. <laughs> did um. Did you have an opportunity to study under any of the famous scientists? I met um, I met uh, Hawking. Uh, Did you? On one or two occasions. Uh, he was That's uh, pretty cool. He was in his he was in his wheelchair by then, but uh-huh. talking. I, mean, I didn't. I you know I didn't sort of know him or anything. But uh, uh, he 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 was in the college next door to me. So uh, and I, so I did see him once at some at some sort of you know, conference or something. And um, uh, yeah, there were there were the odd sort of Nobel Prize winner. That, that used to lecture us. Wow. Quite cool. Really. <laughs> so cool, man. And you're <laughs> into science, you're taking science classes with world-renowned scientists. It's, it is quite something. I mean, it's one of those awful things that I probably missed a couple as well without thinking, you know, because I was I couldn't get out of bed that morning. But that's retrospect, right? Really, yeah. <laughs> like you didn't I'm, understand what you had the opportunity that. to see. <laughs> what an odd death, though, for Stephen Hawking in terms of all the coincidences that kind of added up there at the end, huh? Yeah, with uh, yeah. Einstein's birthday and number oh, that was that was extraordinary, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yes. that's crazy. I mean, I I completely I mean, support um, yeah. as far as assisted suicide is concerned. So I mean, it's none of our business. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're going to pick a death, that's the best that death best. It's a good death day. <laughs> I think I do think that um, he. Uh, I mean, the fact that he, he you know, the fact the fact that he lost it as long as he did was absolutely extraordinary. I mean, Miraculous, must yeah. Have been, uh, he must have had a had a spirit which was, you know, pretty unquenchable, really. Had some questions he needed answers for him. Um, yeah, he left. Wouldn't, wouldn't have until he got them. Yeah. Um. So, um, do you think uh, you'd ever write a speculative fiction novel, like a science fiction story? I'd, I'd love to. I love science fiction. I've always, always loved science fiction, and uh, um, I would love to. I mean, the only the only thing that concerns me is is how good. So, so much of it is, you know, like it's, it's yeah. a, there's a very high a bar. C R A P, right? I mean, in terms of what's available. <laughs> well, it's, it's. I mean, I, I just, you know, the, the, I'm reading. I don't know if you know that all the Banks novels and things like that in Banks. Um, mm. 
uh, science fiction, and and they're just so good. You know, I sort of I'm not sure my brain would be able, the the inventiveness of them is fantastic. But yeah, um, yeah, no, it'd be interesting actually. I ought to have a think about that because uh, I do love them, and uh, uh, I love that genre. Actually. Uh, what what gave you an interest in science? So what particularly were you looking into when you were I, doing your science I was, studies? I was. Um, uh, I, I was actually, I started off doing, uh, loving chemistry because um, when I was about eight, a, a friend of mine gave me a book about how to make fireworks. Uh -huh. And um, so with my chemistry set, I sort of started off making fireworks, getting increasingly dangerous. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and sort of that set me off, really. And I, I, I love the, um, so I like the chemistry side of it. And then when I went to Cambridge, I was always much better at the chemistry side of it than the, the mathematical physical side mm -hmm. and um, then at Cambridge at that time was very very hot on biochemistry and you know, sort of uh, that sort of uh, crossover between biology and chemistry and I mean there were there were discoveries being made daily you know in, in, which is extraordinary I think and uh, so I did we did quite a lot of that and and then when I realized I wasn't going to do it or didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. They had this wonderful subject called history and philosophy of science. Which ah. I did last year, if you if you if you realised that you weren't going to be a proper scientist, which I wasn't, um, you could do this uh, sort of philosophy and history course of science, which I I found absolutely fascinating, and um, still still do actually. I would still read it. The application of the sciences don't really interest me, but the history and the people that were involved are uh, extraordinary. I yeah. love that part of yeah. it. Completely. Yeah, no, it, it is fascinating and sort of how, you know, how much is accident and how much is design and things like that. It's uh, yeah. the other, and, the other and, part is magic to me, like <laughs> putting the oh, mathematical equations together yeah, or yeah. You know, yeah. calculating how to get to Mars. I'm like, I can, mm. I, that's magic to me. That's all yes. of it above the like addition or subtraction level of math it's like i've got more into maths funnily enough as i sort of get older because i think you have to be in finance it's, right i mean you have it's, to have i guess so yeah yeah i mean actually to be honest i always it always amuses me um calling uh calling financial people rocket scientists because it's but they are it's not, though <laughs> it's not, no, i mean you get people rocket, who have you degrees should, in math and they could yeah. be they oh, yeah. can either go to banking or they go to NASA. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like they're just decided. The trouble is that that's the bit. Those are the bits you should be worried about because no one can understand them apart from them. But um, I did. Uh, I did. Yeah. No. I did. I did a fair amount of modelling and stuff in in finances, and and uh, uh, it always slightly worried me that, that that you know not very many people could actually work out what was going on. Nobody. Yeah. And, I trust it. Which, basically, which it. now and I'm we a know blind man being led around by people telling me what their <laughs> what the truth is, and I can't tell if they're telling me the truth. I can't do the yeah. math. I think yeah, that's well, the most. Yeah. I think that's the <laughs> saddest thing about our society is that mm. nobody knows the details. They just well, trust. The the, is it's trust. just too much. There's too yeah, much. Isn't there? the, the, you can't know everything. The, there was a wonderful, um, I did uh, in the science, in my history of science, I did the sort of, you know, 15th, 16th centuries. And at that point, you could basically sit down everything there was to know about science. And you, know, you could be a Renaissance man and actually um, Even better, everything. somebody who was a, yeah. like a writer like yourself could be then yeah. making up science and just oh, at the same time. as now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now, I mean, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't no. cover a millionth of it, could you? Because it's just not, you know, there's enough days in the, in the week. But... Um, I've been doing kind of an individual study on science fiction authors of the past, like oh, yeah. uh, Robert Heinlein and, oh, right. oh, you know, well, people yeah. of that nature and just their mm. fiction doesn't stand up in terms of tech, mm. in terms mm. of science, in terms of the actualities of the universe. Yes. You know what I yeah. mean? And now we want our science fiction authors to know what the hell they're talking about, not only yeah. teach us about the future, but kind of present a world that makes sense make it sense i mean it has to make sense anyway but i but i guess that you sort of you can be quite clever can't you about how you um how you frame it so so it, it, you know the, it, it's not necessarily it's not it's very unlikely to be possible but um on the other hand i suppose you know where you know the, we a hundred years ago we would have thought lots of things were impossible that aren't so except for Jules Verne. I mean what he was sending people to the moon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, like yeah. the mid nineteenth century. It's crazy yeah, what yeah. that guy came up with came up with. I think I think I I mean yeah, I actually subscribe to the 
the idea that you know almost if you can think about it it's almost certainly going to happen one day but <laughs> i don't know whether 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 that day will be you know tomorrow or a million years time in terms of i just you know if you if you can think of something yeah it's probably going to happen <laughs> wasn't that what they say about science fiction authors yeah. I, or science fiction yeah. writers actually you don't yeah. really yeah. see that much farther than your own street lamps on your block or yes. something along those lines yeah. So I mean, beyond that's there, right. you can imagine there has to be another street lamp. So I mean, yeah. that's when the imagination starts to spread off a yeah. little bit. Yeah, and I think also there are there's there was a very funny program. Um, there was a program in the UK called Tomorrow's World, which used to you know prophesy what the next big thing was uh -huh. on telly, and and um, and they had one great program. This about thirty years ago or something of you know what 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 two thousand and twenty would look like, and it was nothing like it. What it looked like was. <laughs> A bad version of 1960, you know, with some yeah. of the people wearing silver clothes, and oh, it was just rubbish. It was nothing like what it actually is like at all. Or that, or so, you know, they saw the future and just one particular future and a one little area where they were wearing silver outfits. I think, I think, I think they what they saw was you know, they just sort of displaced themselves, you know, I want to be wearing and, silver outfits in 2020. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they obviously watched too much Star Trek or something, so it was just you know, it was just nonsense and and. But of course, you know, then again, if you, I always think, you know, if you look at, I mean, sort of, you know, the, the great advantages we've, we've lived through, you don't really notice what's going on because you're living through it. So, you, you, do, you know, computer, computers and, and, and phones. Right. You know, Can you imagine like somebody you know, take your phone away and say you can't use this yeah, anymore? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, and also when you saw those first Star Trek movies, you know, and they had mm -hmm. the old, they had the old communicator, you know, that looked completely otherworldly. And now yeah, it just turned know, out to be like a mobile phone. Yeah, exactly <laughs> what it was. You know, in fact, it probably was a mobile phone. Right? And we're like steps up from that. We can't transport anything yet, but at least we oh, have yeah, a computer. Yeah, we'll get that, yeah. It is but, pretty cool, um, though, having all the information of the World Wide Web right there in your oh, hand. I, I find it absolutely extraordinary. We were, um, I was doing um, a piece on uh, our, our village, um, uh, and it, could, it was actually about the First World War. And about soldiers that had come from our village in 1914 or whatever, and and been killed, and there's a list of them. And using the World Wide Web, I was able to literally go down, you know, sort of drill down through histories and Italian histories and uh, army histories and things, and, and get down to a facsimile in some library somewhere of a piece of typewritten script of a report of a battle or something like that, you know, just to check what happened to these people. And I, just, I couldn't believe it. I was I was absolutely gobsmacked by the amount of um, the amount of information at yeah, your fingertips really on a was, random yeah. afternoon where and you I just sitting, got curious. I was something. sitting in France. You got a, you know, I was sitting in the middle of a house in France next to some people with a computer. <laughs> it was bizarre, you know. <laughs> I mean, the same thing. Man. Twenty, thirty years ago, you would have had to get yeah. up. Wait oh. until Monday when the library yeah. opened, and like somehow yeah. I never learned how to use these machines with a microfish. You'd have to oh. go through the oh, microfish. No. Awful! I know, awful. And I remember <laughs> it would take that, all day. You know. It might take weeks. Yeah, it might yeah, take. You might you, know. be, you might write a book about the subject just because of the research that you gathered. Just getting oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I think that's what that's what many academics do, isn't it? But right? um, it is extraordinary how how easy it is now. And uh, and the trouble is, it's almost it's so, it's so huge that you. You, you, we've got back to the stage. You don't know, you know. You, you've got to know what you're looking for. Don't yeah. You, to, you know, if you, there's no point just going out and sort of thinking it'll happen. You know. Well, that's kind of something. the interesting part about Wikipedia, isn't it? Because you could yeah. land someplace, you know, looking yeah. for something specific, and then while within that piece of information, find other stuff that you want to go on yes. to. Yes, of Those course. Breadcrumbs kind of make your day sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I had a friend, yeah, yeah. Um, I talked to somebody on this podcast once who wants mm -hmm. to write fiction like that, mm. where it just never ends and, you know, you yes. can pick the direction that you take the narrative. Yes. So sort of like James, sort of James Joyce or something, it could be quite weird, <laughs> wouldn't it? Uh, right. yeah. Every book yeah, is a little but, bit different, but it has yeah. still that same novel mm. feel to it. Yes. There's a very good book, um, and I'm trying to remember what the, um, the Goon Squad, Visit from the Goon Squad or something, it's a New York one, I think it might have even won a Pulitzer Prize or something about two or three years ago, where they had the it's very they have sort of five five or six different people's stories all sort of jumbled up, completely jumbled up. You know, sometimes one page and then another, and it was it was a very interesting way of doing it. Whether whether I could, it's, it requires quite a quite a clever 
<laughs> yeah. Quite a keen mind to do it, yeah. The Goon Squad, Visit from the Goon Squad. I think it's called Visit from the Goon Squad. It's about 2010, eight, eight or, years now. Eight or nine, yeah, about eight or nine different characters uh, in New York. And it was, it's a very good book. It's a very good book. Did, um, uh, man, I just lost my, compl- in the middle of saying did that, mm-hmm. I lost my train of thought. I'm just looking at this, <laughs> this novel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's gone completely. So we'll, we'll right. go in a different direction. Yes. Um, so history and the philosophy of sciences. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. That mm-hmm. was your last classes. I mean, how does it work at like a that school was, like Cambridge? I mean, you was, have semesters. Well, yeah, it, it's we have with terms. Yeah, it yeah. was effectively had three years. So um, the first two of which were the, the straightforward degree, and then the third was an honors uh, an honors degree. Uh, so I got me a, a master of arts, and um, the the subject it was called the tripos from, from mm. the, the Greek, uh, and it was natural sciences natural sciences in this case meaning mass, uh, well, physics chemistry biology but um because it was sort of old because it's old and um latin in its sort of you know in its origination it, it they 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 put philosophy alongside science in the same area in the same subject so so i could do so as part of the natural sciences tripos i could do philosophy for my last year uh, did you do the philosophy? Of philosophy of you took a uh, you took actual philosophy? No, it was philosophy of science, but it was oh, okay. there was it was sort of general philosophy as well because um, you, you need it. So it was sort of a combination, really. It's interesting but, uh, that and, they would throw uh, philosophy into that. Yeah, as a yeah. No, it was it was it was. I had to learn to write again after about sort of seven years of not not putting a pen to because you know, most science is just the question of uh, well writing style is not the most important thing put it that way so uh uh it, you know writing long essays about about you know history or or or, or philosophy was quite a was quite a interesting time did you did you do a lot of writing in london during your career as a project I used to, in finance? yeah i used to enjoy, well, i used to enjoy writing a, a, a lot of it was writing um, prospectuses and things for um, for deals. So, funnily enough, I probably did, although they were terrifically specific. Um, but they have to be you know, vibrant, right? I mean, they they can't be dry. Oh, You're selling oh no, they could, no, they could they could be as boring as you like. Actually. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> but, uh, then I had to present. I'm picturing them. like an advertisement for stock it, exchanges or it, something. It's not quite. I, I think, Charlie. Uh, yeah, it was. I think it was more. Um, no, you had to be absolutely, you know, absolutely, uh, totally straight, and uh, you couldn't. There was not one second, not one bit of metaphor allowed because no flowery be, languages. No flowery languages. It had to be absolutely provable. You know, everything you had to, you you put down, you had to be able to prove. So, um, and it's you and a team again working with oh, yeah, people and lawyers, developing that. And, yeah, That's and lawyers and everything. Yeah. Did right? you did you project manage your wife and wrote write that no. novel? Oh, no. <laughs> did no, you use your old skills and kind of meld that? Man, that's so cool that you've been kind of working in that that way for for a long time now. Yeah, I suppose so. It's um, it's I I mean I, I have to say I did enjoy, it, although I was glad to sort of you know, get out of it in, in, in when I did. The, the mm-hmm. uh, I did actually enjoy the, the city, especially in the early. In the sort of eighties and nineties, I just thought I had a great time. It was really good fun. Yeah, I've never been to London. Um, oh, it's, unfortunately. It's, oh, you should. It's, it's a great place. To. And actually, it is actually it coincided with a huge rebirth of uh, not only London but the whole of Britain. Basically, I was 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 fairly sort of um, uh, tired by the sort of at the end of the seventies and uh, yeah. The, that was everybody, though, wasn't it? New York's the same way. It was exhausting. Yeah, actually, it's very similar. And I, I found, certainly having been going over to New York and back, which I did a few times, um, I found that sort of in the, yeah, in the whereas in the 80s, it was, it was you know, quite, what's the word? Um, Deadly? Tense. Quite <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a tense place. Yeah. By the time, you know, by, uh, by now, it's, it's much more, I think it's much more friendly, actually. I believe so too. Um, yeah. Back in like '89 was the most violent year the city had. 
Well, and that I... seems like just yesterday. <laughs> it seems like it's just around. <laughs> well, unfortunately, yeah, that's age, unfortunately, isn't it? But um, I uh, no, I mean, London was a very sort of dull and and, and sort of second rate place, and it sort of it just it just uh, caught the um, I don't know why, but it, anyway, it, it did very well, and it's uh, it's a great place actually now. It's well worth seeing, well worth going to. I've heard the uh, the traffic is horrible. Traffic's dreadful, but uh, it's not as bad as in Paris. <laughs> oh, is it worse in Paris? I'd not it's heard worse. that. Oh, it's worse in Paris by a mile. I mean, uh, I love it's just London's cities. much bigger. That's all. So it's 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 less you know it's less bad, but it's bad over a wider area. It's it's horrible all over this world. Cars are just devastating. I feel strangled yeah. no matter where you go. Yeah, we uh, we lived up in the Bronx and had to drive down the yeah. you know yeah. the east uh, the West Side Highway, yeah. and sure. uh, man, we got stuck in traffic for over an hour and a half, going like yeah. five miles. It's, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? That's and um, I mean, the good thing, luckily in London, the um, uh, the underground the underground's been improved considerably mm -hmm. over the last few years. So it's it's gone through a sort of yeah fairly major. So it's actually the underground's great, subway's great. And did the, you um, live in London when you worked there, or yeah, were you always yeah. in London? No, I lived in London for about twenty years. Oh, so that's and, the way to do uh, it. That's when you fall in love with the city. Years. And I like if it, you lived in Kent, driving north to London every single day. Uh, that well, I got to take a train by commute, and oh, uh, you were, I, took okay. a, I used to take a, to take a train, which took me about forty minutes or so. So yeah, it's slightly sort of. I did that for about ten years, and uh, uh, yeah, that was enough. <laughs> so how long did it take you to write the, no the first novel? Um, probably in actual writing time, about a year or so. I did. I, I started and finished, and and gave it to my wife, who ripped it to shreds, and then I'd start again. So. Uh, it, probably two years in all. That um, is so cool. So you'd write a draft, and your wife would edit it, or not edit it, well, but content uh, edit it. <laughs> edit was a bit. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. No, what? actually, no, she was fantastically helpful. Actually. Um, how many novels? Uh, well, I mean, can we talk about your wife for a moment? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, how many novels does she have out? Um, I think it's. Uh, I, I'm going to get this wrong now, but I think it's um, seven stroke eight, eight. Eight. Say. So she's an old hat at this she is process. A, she is. Oh yeah, she. No, she's. Um, and and hers are published. Um, you know, uh, have been published by people like Random House and Harper Collins and people like that. So, so you're published with them now too, though, aren't you? I, I am now. Yeah. Yeah. I will, I will, be. I will be. I will be. Are they going to take your first book as well, or I is don't that? Know. It's actually an interesting thought, isn't it? I should slip it in. I I I, I haven't tried yet. I'm going to wait wait to see how the next one goes. This one goes, but. Um, is your first book independent, independently published? Yeah, Did you it, publish it's, it yourself? It's, there's a there's a publishing company. It's quite a good sort of. It's sort of half halfway house really. There's a company called Troubadour in in the UK that effectively um, they they vet you send scripts in and they vet them and if they like it they will they will publish it. So I think there's there is some sort of you know there is a filter, um, but. Um, I think they they said they were getting something like sort of six or seven hundred books a year, and they publish about a hundred, so two hundred. So you know, it, it's sort of that sort of percentage. And but but you pay for the printing. So you pay I for pay the printing. For, yeah, I pay for the printing, and I and I. That's the expensive part. <laughs> That's uh, it's yeah, and well, actually, I mean, I, it's interesting because I, I I did quite want it printed, so I did get it printed. I could have probably gone onto e ebook and. Um, and obviously that would have saved some money, but I quite want to. You you it. learn with the process, don't you? I mean, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You don't know. If, are you you're not stuck with them contractually. You just. I'm not at all. No, it's just a one off. Uh, just a one off. Print these books through us. Yeah. What do you What did you do with the books that you printed? Um, well, uh, they uh, they keep. Um, I mean, Amazon is is the is the biggest taker, um, and uh, and then I sell some myself. When I when I you know when I go around to, to places and uh, gives you a great opportunity to leave them too, right? Or <laughs> well, a con or something. Funnily, <laughs> funnily enough, I was I've just been in a quite a nice hotel actually in a ski resort in um in in France and uh, I did actually leave one in the library there. Yeah, with a with a with a sort of. Um, Something nice at the front of it, I think, it's sort of to the staff or something. Why not? I mean, people are always looking for books on the road. Somebody yeah. else recommended that you drop it off at an old folks' home. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, you I think actually, yeah, 
and and the other reading groups are great you know we've got lots of uh, there are lots of reading groups around here so i'm so desperately trying to get them. did get you them find over. the process of like building an audience kind of daunting or did it it's come quite, naturally to you it's hard i enjoy doing it but it is quite i mean i think uh it's quite hard work and, <sighs> and, and how and i think whether you know whether it really works or not you know i mean there are just oh so, you're with me then i don't even know if there's so a way to do that us, stuff yeah. There's... You have to write a really good story. I mean, who, yeah. which authors in your life have you gone? I love that guy. I'm going to read his book. I've never um, once said that to myself. Said I love that dude. I'm going to go read his book. Mm. Oh, what you mean in terms of what just seeing stuff and and uh, I mean I I'm I mean, terrible. Like, I you got to check this book out. It's so good. Then I go okay. Yeah. I got to read the book. And then I love yeah. the guy who wrote it. Yeah, I sometimes I do actually go uh, off when I'm sort of I don't know about to go off on holiday or something. I'm, I love going to bookshops and just sort of selecting, you know, three or four random, completely random mm -hmm. books. And sometimes that works out brilliantly. In fact, I mean, quite a lot of you know science fiction. These this chap Ian Banks, who's just uh, who's a uh, author, Scottish author, and has actually just died as of recently. Uh, he, he wrote Who's this? about ten Banks Ian Banks. Oh, Banks. Uh, and he wrote absolutely brilliant science fiction books. And uh, I hate to say this, because you know it's proving that I'm ignorant yeah. as I'll get out. But who are you talking, Banks? Banks I'll look him up. Yeah. Real quick. It was um, God. He wrote a set of science fiction novels about. Um, uh, and I'm trying to. It's terrible, isn't it? Now I know I've got. Is it E. M. Banks? E. M. Banks. Yeah. He, I think the name sounds from, so familiar, but I'm not pulling Ian, up there's, he's, He actually writes under uh, two, it's not okay. annoying. He writes, he has two two author pseudonyms, one one of which he writes proper sort of serious novels with, mm -hmm. literary fiction, and the other he uses for his science fiction. And and I think it's it's either Ian, as in I-E-I-A-N. -E it's I-A-I-N. I-A-I-N, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or... And then, but he might write the science fiction ones under E M, but, but I'm not sure. I'm I can't remember to be honest. Um, but he's prolific. I mean, he's written about twelve science fiction, maybe more science fiction novels, and they are at the superb. Um, and that was yeah, just right, picking up. Fifty nine years old. He was young. Yeah, that's right. Um, and um, you yeah, know, those are just those are. I, got from literally just picking one up and you know finding i couldn't put it down and buying all the rest of them uh so it sometimes happens he's a scottish um, guy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that matters anything, but he's, I yeah now i'm just reading him. i'm just reading a book about scottish about scottish whiskey which he wrote as well actually but, uh, oh he wrote it he's uh, he, he writes he writes he, he writes also he wrote all sorts of things but he's a he's a very good he was a very good novelist actually and uh, he wrote some literary novels as well you know so he had a he had a very wide remit um uh but that, i mean there are so there are i quite enjoyed just sort of um you know taking a potluck as it were yeah, I guess that's one of the reasons I love the internet. Also, is you can just yeah. fumble, uh, stumble on stuff that you oh, never yeah. knew existed prior that's to. Well, music, yeah, music as well, isn't it? Music is extraordinary. The amount of, the amount of stuff that just uh, you know that you could just sort of suddenly find, you find one track or something, and you can go right back and you know look at everything else. Yeah, you said you wanted to be a musician. Yeah, I would have if I had this technical skill. I, I would have I, I would have trade most things to be a to be a pianist to be a proper you know a fully fledged uh, do you uh, play any instruments now I, i'm a pianist i'm a, i do play the piano yeah and oh I, really i actually just started in fact about five or six years ago i started taking lessons again which is uh interesting do you but, think uh, if you hadn't had lessons when you were younger you'd be able to do it still because i cannot um, play an instrument i'd love to learn <laughs> I, oh i think i think you can start at any age I, you think so I, unfortunately the problem is you know you don't get better quite so fast as when you're sort of I, I only started when i was about 12 and i wish i'd started four or five years earlier because i think if i had i would have been you know it would have been that much better it's much you seem to be able to learn everything much quicker yeah, my wife age. plays uh, piano and a bunch yeah. of string things, instruments, oh, beyond violin, stuff like that, right? But I think oh, I it does it. something to your hands. It like yeah. makes them more dexterous or whatnot. I cannot. I feel <laughs> like my hands are broken when I try to switch chords on the guitar. Yeah. Not only that, but I cannot strum. 
Uh, right. <laughs> at the no, same, guitar, I can't get my brain to do both things. Guitar, at the same time. guitar, I used to find rather painful, frankly, actually. But yeah, yeah I know what you mean. But um, but piano, yeah, no, I I, I have, you know, I'm, I still do that a lot, actually. And I enjoy writing, and I I enjoy, I enjoy writing songs as well. So it's. Uh, what do you do with the songs that you write? Um, I sort of occasionally play them for mate friends, and um, there's a there's we've got we've got a very good sort of dramatic dramatic um, amateur dramatic society here, so. Every year we do a few shows and we sometimes do plays and I sometimes write the, I write the um, local pantomime. I don't know if you, do you have pantomimes in the states? Uh, um, like mimes? Pantomimes, it's called. It's a sort of fairy story, children's sort of. Children's, I, I, uh, I don't know. How do you do one? Is mm. it set up with puppets? Like no, in it's, shadow it's, no, it's actors. No? no, it's proper. It's proper actors. Um, oh, it's sort of like you know, like the Cinderella and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's sort of it's. It's fairy tales, effectively. I don't know. Maybe we'd call them a matinee or something along those lines. Something like, yeah, but it sort of it has a sort of tradition that goes with it, so that you get sort of um, oh, men dressing up as women and and sort of you know the the various things like that. And uh, you know, there's always, there's always a baddie and there's various um, traditional things that happen. In it. I'm still so, taken um, aback by the fact that you have a dramatical society that you've joined. I'm like jealous. I want to join a dramatical society. <laughs> come put on plays. Really it's really good fun, actually. And we do. We put on two plays a year, and uh, you know, sometimes they're straight, normal plays, and sometimes they're uh, shows, and um, sometimes uh, you know, the, I'll do a few. Uh, I'll do a few of my songs and things like that. So, is it within your an audience of the dramatical group itself, or the? The society okay. itself, or do you have other people that come in as well, like outside? Oh no, it's everyone. No, so uh, no, we we get the whole village in. Uh, we get That's everyone. Cool. You know, we get uh, we get full houses because it only happens twice a year. So uh, we've we've got about there are about six or seven hundred people in the village. So uh, we managed to fill our village hall once or twice a year. That's cool. And your village is Kent. No, yeah. your village uh, is in it's, Kent. It's, it's yeah, the village is called Penshurst, and uh, the county is uh, Kent. So I like England. I like the idea of England. I'd love to go and explore, must, you know, must, the whole how things work in your towns and your cities and whatnot. Because it it's sounds the same. It, yeah. sounds, it sounds absolutely the same, but it's yeah. totally different. It's it's funny. It's it's uh, yeah, two countries. So isn't it two countries separated by a common language? Isn't it? America. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. You could kind of see the English, <laughs> you know, brushing of things up here. The relationship. Oh yeah. But it's been muddled through you know other yeah. cultural invasions it certainly has but i mean i think i mean i guess actually that corner of um of the us is i mean you know the, the sort of new england and uh, that area is probably the most traditional <laughs> one of the most one of the more traditional yeah um, i live in a town surrounded by revolutionary war history i mean george oh, washington oh, touched go. everything around here <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course and i can yeah. just picture him walking around and just pointing at things and saying yeah. there'll be a sign there and there yeah and this is crazy i mean yeah. so this is the last vestige of you know englishness in this country is like yeah. it was yeah. killed off here it's very interesting um you said <laughs> history as well that you studied in school yeah. did you was it just scientific history or did you go farther than that I mean, in, at school, I, I had to do the whole, you know, we had the whole thing. So we did sort of English stuff. Funnily enough, I did, I do remember having to do American history from, uh, American history from 1776 to uh, the Civil War, I think, or something That's like that. <laughs> um, which, what did you think? Which, um, it was okay. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was all about. It was basically funny enough, actually. Is it, is it, if you're gonna start at '76, I mean, you're skipping the best part, the Declaration of Independence. You probably, yeah, yeah. You guys got the Magna Carta. If we don't have the Declaration of Independence, <laughs> we're not gonna look good either. Of course, of course. No, that's that's. <laughs> I, it was all basically about sort of one group of people who, uh, who who didn't want the Federation and the other who did. So it's a bit like where we are now, actually. Yeah. yeah. But, it uh, is amazing how things don't change, right? In terms oh, of history, history repeats itself. Yeah. We just well, we just carry on the narratives, and they just get more and more kind of. <laughs> I thought with things. Yeah, I think Mark Twain got it right actually, didn't he? Because he said, uh, "So history, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it quite often rhymes." Yeah, <laughs> that's, Mark that's Twain. Good... Mark Twain was an amazing guy. I <laughs> I was... really appreciate his career. Oh yeah, he was amazing. I mean, he was a fabulous, fabulous writer actually, and uh, and very funny, obviously. So, yeah, uh, I mean, he was kind of like a a philosopher. 
oh, yeah. comedian. Yeah. I mean, he's gotten, yeah. he started so much stuff in terms mm. of getting in front of an audience and kind of just engaging. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. And it did a lot of sort of, it did a lot of um, taking all the old uh, folk tales, didn't they, and everything. And, um, you know, put, uh, putting them into, yeah, putting them to books, effectively. The unfortunate uh, thing about Mark Twain is when I think of him, I think of Tom Sawyer and I think of Huckleberry, yeah. Huckleberry Finn oh, and yeah. you know, the Absolutely. frog of whatever it was, County. All of his other work is obscured by... It is. It is. Absolutely. I think it's personality or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. It's just unfortunate. It's one of those things. They were such big, big sellers that they're really the only things you see, aren't they? Yeah. Um, um, I mean, that's what I associate. And I know he's you know, made his career off of more than uh, that. He did, he did a lot more than that. And, I know he did. He always did. Wasn't he that he was a guy, wasn't he, who had the um who had the uh, obituary which was published before he died and he had to send yeah. a letter to the paper saying rumors of my death he He's like, one of the first people who did that. Yeah, he died before he died yeah. that year. Anyway. He was not a very and, well man that year. They weren't yeah. guessing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they were going by That's like, pretty strong evidence that he was probably gonna die any day. There was a wonderful comedian in the UK called Spike Milligan who, who, who they said, What what do you want on your um you know, on your tombstone, and he said, "Can you put? They told I told you I was ill." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no, it's uh, there is. I mean, it's, I think the the sort of the 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 UK American relationship is a very interesting one, actually. It is. Uh, what our, did you? Um, I mean, it's interesting to think about the English perspective from mm. or what we'd call the Revolutionary War, and I don't even know yeah. what do you guys call it. Uh, we've got the American War of Independence. Oh, okay, I've heard that before. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, it's funny, isn't it, that you sort of have that, and then, uh, but that's, um, Christ, that's uh, what are we talking? Three, three hundred or three hundred and fifty years ago now. So. Well, actually, two hundred and forty. Two hundred. Sorry, two hundred and fifty. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, is it times right up with my my birth year? I know exactly yeah. how old this country is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is add no, it's very, ago. it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's just, it's sort of, uh, there's been such a strong relationship between the countries ever since that, um, you know, once they stop fighting each other. I mean, that was just one war going on for yeah. England then. I mean, you were well, fighting France at the same time, uh, well, Spain, I think. Yeah, and I think if, I mean, there was a war between America and England in, yeah, it, at the same time as the Napoleonic Wars, wasn't there? Yeah, 1812. 18 I mean. something, yeah, uh, just for a short one. And then, uh, um, but actually, it's funny. There was a, I've read a very good book, uh, sort of what if history book about you know what what if you know uh, what if something had turned out differently. And one of the I chapters was about the uh, was about the Louisiana, the Louisiana Purchase mm -hmm. from France, which what would have happened if uh, if Napoleon had not been bankrupted by his war, and uh, and and you know would and had decided not to sell. <laughs> it would be a very different different world. <laughs> Oh, man, that would be an interesting world if he hadn't yeah. have gotten if he didn't bankrupt himself with the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he had to he had to sell the he had to sell Louisiana. The, he had to deal have the Louisiana purchase. He didn't have any money. So uh, um, this is after yeah, the war was funny. over with. I can't remember I the think, history. I, I know Thomas was, Jefferson bought it. I, I never heard the during, connection. But I'm not sure. I'm, I think it was. I think it was during because effectively the. Um, the Brits, the UK, the UK owned the sea, and the and the and the French owned the land. Wow, you know why we don't hear about that is we aided and abetted Napoleon's conquering of yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah, we gave him yeah. money to do it. We funded his war. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's well. There you go. And <laughs> now you know that's why. Interesting, yeah. isn't it? We yeah. don't hear about but that part. We hear that we yeah. bought the, the whatever it is from the French for three million dollars yeah. or something. Just, that's, yeah, no, that's that was uh, that was. Uh, I'm sure that was. Well, it was funding. Yeah, it was funding. It was. I mean, what else would you do? That way? Literally, actually, came to us and said, "Hey, I'm war. broke. You were you were war with the UK. So I can attack <laughs> Russia. <laughs> yeah. You were you were right. You know, you were at war with the UK at that point. So it's fair <laughs> enough, I think. But, uh, I guess right. I guess we were funding yeah. the other guys. Yeah, it's funny life. <laughs> Ah, uh, anyway. Or do we um, burn our own White House and blame it on you guys so that we couldn't help them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. History's right. weird, right? Because it's a conspiracy. It's only told by oh, the people well. who want to let their story know, not the other side. Yes, of course. The so other side's always, always, yeah, it's it's always written by the winner, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, it's right. not true. There's but... more there. Sorry, this is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's no, very it's crazy. crazy. That's um, nice. So your second book yep. will be about cricket as well. Uh, no, what the the, the no, not the one with your wife? 
The one with First. my wife is yeah, is about murder. The second, my second one, well, I think actually I'll keep the I'll keep I want to keep the um, hero because uh, he's as I say he's a he's a he's a, he's a character I enjoy uh, I enjoy jou- jousting with, and um, and I like the 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 area the 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 location is great. So whether we'll keep the cricket, I don't know, but we'll, it'll be something nefarious going on in the Seychelles. <laughs> I'm hoping that you keep the cricket and, and the novels become popular worldwide, even in this country, and that we all yeah. know what the hell this game cricket's about. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, unfortunately, one of, the, one of the things that I don't do, because in fact, quite a lot of people have said, you know, I was a bit worried because I didn't like cricket. So, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't think I'd like the book. Actually, it's there's not an awful lot of cricket in it. Although, it, it you know, the 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 action proceeds by cricket matches. So there, it is there, but it's not sort of, um, you know, there's not a lot of discussion about it. Or you 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 probably need to know how the scoring works and things. But apart from that, it's not. Uh, it's I don't not know how the scoring works. I don't know how anything <laughs> works. You, you, it's, you'd understand actually it's, it's, it's not that different from baseball to be honest it but, just seems uh, such a it's such a polite sport it is a wonderful <laughs> sport. And, uh, uh, there was actually i mean there is i think it's still true to this day that um if 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 the if the opposing team think they've got a wicket which you know they think they've got someone out um if they don't say nothing happens you have to appeal before you can be given out you should be thinking about it. It's crazy, you know. If so, you know you can't. It's like having it would be like in 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 football or something. You know, you you wouldn't be able to give a foul unless the opposing team asked you. Oh, uh, he held <laughs> me or something. Bizarre, yeah, exactly. It's quite bizarre. But, That's uh, such an interesting sport. It does baseball does derive from it, but yeah, baseball is it, kind of like the ruder cousin of it. <laughs> it's like, like Anders, yeah, that was, it's it's a sort of uh, it's not. I mean, it's not it's not massively dissimilar. And uh, I do remember having a few American mates who came and played cricket with us, and they held the bat like a you know like a baseball bat, and that that had to be stopped, obviously. <laughs> obviously, you gotta you, you kind of have to hold it like a. Golf it's, course, it's, don't you? you hold it. Yeah, it's more vertical than yeah, exactly. Not 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 like a baseball, uh, not like a baseball bat. But, what if somebody? Uh, want, I mean, like at one point in your life, yeah, do you think you're able to learn about a new sport like cricket? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. complex, right? Yeah, you have to have played it. I think to get the nuances. It's, it's quite a. I mean, it is a very complicated game. But I suppose actually, the, 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 what is as I said at the beginning, what is very funny about it is that it's one of those sports you can you can talk about till the cows come home and and you know sort of never really um you're not you're not really adding to the great value of human knowledge it's just it's just you can just talk about it and uh, uh you can appreciate a shot you know so no that's very on. true a good yeah. shot or a good play will transcend yeah. Yeah. knowledge yeah. Of it. exactly yeah that's very true if everybody else is cheering you cheer too oh yeah i had i had um and uh, yeah, all sorts of people like it. Um, it's, it's, I mean, if you're English and uh, if you're British or Australian, basically, uh, you know, it's a, or Indian, uh, it's a, it's you know, the people absolutely love it. And, well, uh, universally, if you're writing about yeah. an underdog, people love yeah, that. Yeah, and that's that always. Yeah, I mean, that always that's always helps, doesn't it? When the uh, when the small guy wins. But so, you don't yeah. have a schedule for the second book right now. Right now, Not you're working on the right second now. book to your yeah. wife and yours contract. And yes, the first exactly. book has it been published? It hasn't. It's coming out in um, in the summer um, in the states. We've got a states publisher and a, and a UK publisher. The states publisher is um, Harper Collins, uh, and I think it's coming out in sort of uh, hopefully sort of early to mid summer. How does that work for you? Do you get to do stuff now? Do you get to go places on the company dime, or do you, how do you um, market that? I don't. Dollars? I don't. Well, it's interesting actually. In the states, um, I'm not sure t- to be honest, because um, uh, my wife, uh, Deborah Lawrence, which is the, my wife's pen name, is uh, is is you know quite well known in the states, and um, she's had Harper Collins has been her editor for a, for three or four books now, and that. Um, we went to the book show in the book fair in the in the in New York. Uh, is it in in March or April? April. I'm uh, going myself this April. year. 
Oh, right. Well, that's, yeah, we went to that uh, a couple of years ago. Book um, but we didn't go round. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We didn't go round uh, uh, the States. We're K- in the UK, we might go around a few, you know, sort of book festivals and things like that. Sign some books um, and stuff. Sign some books. There might be some signings. It it sort of depends on the um, on the marketing budget that they're prepared to put behind us. To be that's so cool, so though. I mean, in terms of you going from indie, well, in terms of yeah. you're yeah. with that. Yeah. That indie publisher yeah. to this, you're going to get a marketing budget. Oh yeah, I'm really you know, I mean, I, I unfortunately one of those people that I love it. So um, you know, I'm, uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy public speaking and speaking and things like that. I mean, so, obviously, uh, if you're going to write, you kind of fantasize about what stuff like that looks like, the the, oh, yeah. the, the scheduling, and you could do this and that, and that's yeah, that's exactly. pretty cool. Um, so no, you're going to be a, doing that this summer. I hope so, and um, we're um. Uh, or, you know, or sort of, yeah, over over the over the next six months or so, and uh, we'll see see and how it's going to keep writing the second one and eventually the third one. Um, what happens after the contract? You satisfy the contract, you're done, or well, do they I mean, sell the books and then say, hey, this worked out pretty good, let's do another one? Well, I'm hoping, hoping the second, <laughs> hoping they, hoping they want us to do some more afterwards. Uh, if it, you know, if it works, and uh, it, yeah, with a bit of luck, it'll work, and uh, and they'll want a few more, and it's um, it's quite a. It, it's a nice um it's a rich seam to be able to mine to sort of you know use use uh characters more than once yeah but efficient <laughs> yeah exactly i mean at least you get to develop uh kind of an emotional attachment to them yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah and you sort of know what they're going to say after a while mm-hmm. i think and um dredging uh, and, as and much emotion can, out of them as possible <laughs> yeah yeah and and develop you know they develop they can they can you know they can change over over the course of two or three books, so it's quite it's quite interesting actually. We um we're getting a uh, a little bit over an hour now, so I'll let you I'll let you go in a second. But I wanted okay. to ask one last question. Yeah. You know, in terms of like independent publishing versus yep. the traditional publishing, it's very curious to me about how much effort you put into it as yourself or your wife puts into it as herself. Yeah. Because yep. a lot of indies, they put a lot of effort into yep. doing it. Absolutely. Do you are you required to do anything? While you're marketing uh, this book in the summertime, I mean, they saying um, do this or do what not, you're good at, or not, not yet. But I think they have they have warned that they might. So um, we haven't got anything penciled in, but but we're aware that we might be asked to, yeah, go and do some, uh, uh, yeah, do some convention, well, not conventions, but conferences or, or or you know book fairs and things like that. That'll just be just going to the various places around the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, and probably. they'll give you a list. Uh, do this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah, you on Twitter? Exactly. Sorry. Are you on the twits? Um, not re- I, I, I am, but I don't really use it for the book. I use Facebook for the book. Um, okay. And um, <coughs> for, how can they find you quite... on Facebook? Um, hang on, I will give you. Um, yeah, we're well, going to find you on the worldwide web. You've, yeah, actually, you've got it. You've got it on the um, notes. I've uh, you know on the, on the messages we send. Okay. You send me. That's my Facebook page. I'll make sure I put those in the and notes. And that has a season in the sun is the Facebook page you, uh, uh, you you should be able to find from there. If not, send me a message. I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, okay. But it's but it's um, in terms of the independent. Yeah, I mean, in terms of doing the independent stuff, it's what you, you what you get out is what you put in, really, isn't it? It's. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, sometimes you don't feel like you're doing the right thing, but it's nice uh, having somebody guiding you along. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's. I mean, I think it's. I have to say, I think it's interesting having now done sort of all. It, it, it asked me in six months, but it'd be interesting to have seen both processes, having one with with independent and one with a with a proper publisher. Well, uh, at the end of the day, um, you've lived a pretty interesting life. You've been all over the yeah. place in terms of your degree was <laughs> in science, and you yeah. worked in finance, and now you're yeah. actually, you know, spending. Yeah. Some time in publishing. I mean, it's, it's been fascinating uh, it's, oh, yeah. talking to you. Oh, well, and, you know, I, I tend to finish well, yeah. up the podcast with like a couple questions. And the first one yeah. would be, you know, uh, what would you recommend to somebody getting started? How would you recommend they kind of um, get to your point? Or I don't know. It's kind of I a got, question. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, I got, I got, I got, I, I started off with, you know, as I say, funnily enough, I, I had found this scene in, in the Seychelles Islands, which got my sort of brain going. And um, and I I mentioned it to my wife and she said, well, you better write it then. <laughs> so the answer is how to get going is get someone to tell you to get going. Yeah, I mean that's or just get going. You have a someone, scene to write. Someone, Start someone writing. Some power over your life just to tell you to get on with it. Yeah. Satisfy that itch. I mean, yeah, if you have power over your own life, that's and not to and not to care if if the first 
not rubbish <laughs> as well because it frequently is. It certainly was in my case. But you're not writing it. You just write the novels with your wife and your novels, and that's all you're writing. No other. Um, I'm writing a. I'm writing a play. Uh, I've got to write a play for my dramatic society for next uh, next Christmas. So uh, in the after the summer, when I've finished off doing this second novel, uh, I've got to start writing a play, which uh, uh, I will do. <laughs> Has anybody ever popped off from your dramatic society, become famous? Um, no, unfortunately, unfortunately, no. I wish they did, but um, no. Um, we're we're um, we're small but perfectly formed, and um, <laughs> we're we're sort of uh, we. It, they're very good, actually. I mean, they are good. You know, they're genuinely you know decent uh, decent actors and actresses, but um, uh, no one has yet sort of um, hit the big time. No. <laughs> It'll couple, be you, man. You'll be the first. Professional. I will. I will. I, I just. I just enjoy playing the piano and uh, and directing them. <laughs> What'll happen <laughs> is you're going to publish it. Like, these books are going to go out. They're going to. You're going to want a Pulitzer. Yeah. Your play is going to get unbelievable attention. Yeah. If you're only, buy yeah. It. Everybody in the play is going to be on. What do you call? What's London's Broadway? Oh, oh West uh, End. yeah, the West End. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah, all going to be yeah. in various plays in the West End, just famous beyond yeah. belief, acting yeah. wise. What a I'm lovely, what a lovely dream! I mean, <laughs> something to write a book about, isn't it? Really. Yeah. <laughs> Last question, I promise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, nice story. Mine, I call it copyright. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my last question for you is what are you reading? What would you recommend for people to pick up? What's on your Kindle or your night table? Oh, what's on at the moment? I'm reading, actually, I'm reading on my Kindle. On the Kindle, I'm reading um, the, um, uh, gosh, now I've got to get the name right. The American, the railroad, the railroad one. Um, oh. The Black Railroad. Uh, do you know the book I mean? Uh, I've, I think I heard of it, but I yeah. don't. Obviously it's a Pulitzer it. Prize. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, What's the history of the called, American Railroad? It's. I think that's right. That's what it's called, and it's absolutely. But no, it's not a history. It's. A, it's about the Black American Railroad, the one, the underground one, the underground railway or something. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not a. Uh, it's not a. It's a novel, but it's a sort of novel I think which has some historical um, truth in it, um, and uh, it's an absolutely brilliant book. Um, I haven't got it to hand otherwise i'll tell you the name of it but um uh, it's called something like the underground railway <laughs> okay oh i see it pulitzer yeah. prize winner uh the That's underground it. rail rail absolute, road right yeah absolutely written brilliant. by <sighs> where did you go oh here it is right there colson yeah. whitehead that's right absolute super book really really good book um i mean pretty pretty unpleasant action to be honest but um well worth reading. Yeah. <clears throat> and, I mean, if you've um, ever been out in the cold with nowhere to go to warm yourself up at any time in your life, you understand they had no place to go and they were being chased by dogs. Uh, I mean, Har it's a really harrowing novel, actually. But it's, but it's, it's, it's as I say, it's, it's beautifully written and it's, uh, it's well worth reading. Um, I'm reading a book called um, Why the West Rules <laughs> for Now. <laughs> by a for now. In, yeah, Why the West Rules for Now. Uh, Ian, Ian Morris, it's a history book about why the West um, won out to start off with you know, up until now, uh, which is quite. We're very violent. I hope that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> we just uh, we started farming earlier, actually. I think that's what it comes down to. But um, it's quite an interesting. It's an interesting book. Um, Killed all the Native Americans with our diseases. Well, uh, that was uh, that was pretty quick. Yeah, um, that's uh, and. Um, what else am I reading? Um, uh, those are the two. Those are the two I'm at the moment, actually. I think it's probably the best. Well, um, man, I thank yeah. you so much for being on the show. It was a joy talking to you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, yeah, good, uh, good luck to you, and um, yeah, very nice to talk to you. Yes, Cheers, absolutely. Mate. Bye, bye. Bye.